Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number five, I believe. <laughs> I hope I'm getting that right. And I uh, hope everybody is having a great Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas for those who celebrate. If you don't, that's all right. We're actually half in our household, so we celebrate Hanukkah, we celebrate Christmas, celebrate everything. My kids are spoiled, the whole nine yards. And if, again, you don't celebrate any of those, that's all right, too, because uh, this episode is not about Christmas, but it's kind of a good time of family and reflection and all of those types of things. And this is a little bit of a departure from actual published books because it's really Scott's ticket collection. And this is something that was actually uh, a Christmas gift to me many, many years ago, maybe even like 20, well, not quite 20, but I don't know, somewhere in that ballpark about 15 to 20 years ago, back when we actually had tickets. Imagine that. And I, we talked about this. I, I showcased my Cubs ticket collection this one is more of a general ticket collection, and unfortunately, I really haven't been doing much of it lately, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of put into out into the digital universe some of the cool concerts that I've been to. Um, it's not all of them. I haven't always been good about keeping my tickets, but um, this actually solved, you know, and I, it's funny, I do break, crack this out, I would say, it feels like once a year, <laughs> and it solves a mystery. Um, I remember I actually won a bet one time uh, because I was able to find my old ticket, and like for, uh, I was talking to somebody who is also a Nine Inch Nails fan, I, I do, I'm a big fan of Nine Inch Nails, and I was like, no, I actually saw Nine Inch Nails in concert with Perfect Circle, and they're like, no, they've never toured with Perfect Circle, sure enough, um, I sent the, uh, the ticket stub, it was Nine Inch Nails with per Perfect Circle, it might even be in here, I wonder, uh, let's see, that would have been, let's see if I can find it. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it was this one right here. So April 18th, 2000. And so I have the ticket. It doesn't say perfect circle on it. But I was able to go on the website, and they talked about Nine Inch Nails touring with uh, Perfect Circle. So it was pretty pretty awesome. So um, I do have a couple missing tickets. I even wrote myself a note. These are some of the ones that are missing. Uh, for those who don't know my musical and what I'm into, so I know Builder Buds, you've shown off kind of some of the things that you liked with Hot Mulligan, you know, being a fan. I used to chase chase bands and do all of that kind of fun stuff also have uh, maybe i'll have to showcase this at some point and do like a like a slideshow of all the the pictures and cool stuff and there might be some in here i don't know it might be in a different book but i was a huge usc fan still a usc fan but i i don't watch nearly as much as i used to the kids have made it really difficult to uh um you know, stay up with uh, UFC and some of those types of things. But I wrote in here that I didn't have the ticket for uh, Chemical Brothers with Paul Oakenfold and Digweed, and that was at Rosemont. Uh, I've been to, and I don't think I have any of these tickets, to Summerfest, um, which I've been to several times, probably the biggest concerts at Summerfest. So that's a big concert in Milwaukee for those who are not familiar went to uh, Stabbing Westward, Coolio, which is a whole nother story. I could probably do like a whole video on like the Coolio mess. So if those remember, that was probably 96, 97, somewhere in that ballpark, Summerfest, Coolio, uh, and how late he was. He was over an hour late and everybody at Summerfest, I mean, it's Milwaukee, you drink beer. Everybody was hammered, and that was a, a nutso concert. Then one of my first, when I moved to Chicago, one of my first concerts was Low Fidelity All-Stars. I just went by myself. I went to a lot of concerts, actually, <laughs> some of them by myself or with, I always begged and pleaded for friends to come with me uh, because I, I was really into some of the electronic and different stuff, and uh not always uh, my roommates and stuff like that didn't know you know they weren't always into that but um i have tickets all the way back so again i went over some of the missing ones um 
even have a ticket like a late night comedy ticket at the Mohican Sun. Uh, that's in New Hampshire, right? Like something like that. I don't know. But that was actually, I, I flew out to Boston, met up with my sister. We drove up to the Meek and Sun, and then eventually made my way to Syracuse, New York. So that was quite a trip. Um, this actually goes back to 1995. So we have 26 years of concert tickets in this. One of the first big concerts that I kept the ticket and really took seriously. I really didn't go to a lot of concerts as a kid. I just wasn't into them. I know it's not that my parents didn't, you know, take me to anything, but I just wasn't really big into concerts and music. I was more, I got into industrial and punk rock. And so <laughs> it just wasn't really touring much. And I never really wanted to pay a lot of money for that. So when I went to college, which is in 1994, then one of my first big concerts was the uh, the Bush um, that was the spring of 95. And that was, I think it was the second time that they had made their way through Milwaukee. Um, they were still kind of, they weren't unknown. They were really becoming popular and everything Zen was on the, on the radio, but it was, uh, I'd never heard of them. They were like, Hey, checked out this album. That was pretty crazy. Then in 96. So the next year we went to the sex pistols. That was a great concert. That's also my first body passing um a time that i've ever been body passed in a in a in a crowd um i remember i was having a great time six pistols it was actually a very it was an older crowd right so i was in my uh low 20s it was yeah actually 20 so we couldn't even drink <laughs> legally and remember a guy's like dude you want to body surf i'm like uh uh sure <laughs> and then he he boosted me up next thing i know i was getting like thrown almost on stage with the sex pistols because <laughs> i was so light i was probably like 120 pounds at that point then uh, another one so i was a big gravity kills fan and this was a really cool one um they did like a, a christmas slash halloween kind of concert they called it their extreme christmas show and at this one i actually screamed out <laughs> i did the the classic free bird and then gravity kills they stopped what they were doing and they switched and they played uh leonard skinner uh give me three steps and then we're like don't tell me i don't take requests and that was a pretty fun uh, concert, but I've had such good experiences with concerts of course i talked about nine inch nails then I, I moved to Chicago um, just after 2000, started in the suburbs, and then I moved to the city, and I lived literally two or three blocks away, so just over a block, couple blocks, from the Chicago Metro, which is a great uh, concert venue, especially it's like medium size, so it's not really large, and a, lo a lot of those like up-and-coming uh, type bands play at all the time, and so... I remember, again, being into electronic music. Oh, and right next door, there was like a late night after hours club that would go to like three or four in the morning sometimes. And so they would they would play and then sometimes they would guest DJ next door. So sometimes I saw them at the club. Sometimes I saw them actually at the Metro. Um, and there was at least and I remember moving down there um, in 2001. And it was just concert after concert after concert. So check this out. I saw back to back. So Tuesday, October 9th, I saw Basement Jacks. I think, what was that other one that I went to? Low Fidelity. Oh, the Low Fidelity All Stars. I think that was probably beginning of October, somewhere in there. It was literally right around this. And then Tuesday, October 9th, was Basement Jacks. So that was crazy. So Low Fidelity R Stars, then Basement Jacks. Then the next week, so October 17th, 2001, was Orbital. And I think that show was just crazy good. Um, and then my buddy wanted to see Orbital again. So I went that weekend. I saw Orbital again up in Milwaukee at the Rave. And the rave is where we saw the Sex Pistols. That was the, the the rave was a great place in Milwaukee. A lot of alternative bands, just a ton of. It's a great place, and they also have an upstairs, which is the Eagles Ballroom, 
in Milwaukee. So for my Milwaukee folks out there, I, I, had, I did shows in Chicago and Milwaukee. I'm in a really good spot in terms of concerts. I remember it was just overwhelming. Then uh, let's see, I've got Jimmy Buffett in here, KMFDM, uh, Underworld. That was a great show. So that was before they kind of switched up their lineup. That was really good. Uh, Groove Armada. Um, this one, oh God. This one, like, is probably, you know, I'm going to have to explain if I, you know, if if there is a heaven <laughs> and they and they judge you, <laughs> I might be in trouble uh, because I went to what was called, um, it was it was like uh, the the uh, the TVT Interscope. Um, I forget the name of it, the um, the, the group. But it's it's the one that did the the wax tracks. That's what it was. It was a wax tracks based tour, and they ended in Chicago. So it was the last time. It was the last stop in their tour. I think they had been touring for a couple months or whatever. But it was like Pig Face, Thrill Kill Cult, Zero Mancer, Bile. I think Insane Clown Posse was there, and then they did a show where all of them came on stage at once and then they just started breaking stuff and throwing stuff in the crowd. And, uh, it was over, it was Sunday, April 20th, which I believe was, uh, literally like that Friday of Easter, so like good Friday. And they had like nuns and they were breaking them in half. And sorry, I probably shouldn't be saying these evil things, but, uh, that was pretty, pretty insane. And then, um, yeah, it's probably the wildest show that I've ever been to. And look at some of these prices. And that's this is why I loved all these shows. Look at this. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 12 bucks. I guess Milwaukee, man. They didn't they I practically got in for free. 25 bucks. Like all these concerts. I remember so many good ones. Like this one right here, Groove Armada was amazing. Um I'm trying to remember who there was somebody that opened for them that was super cool. Oh, oh, weekend players open for Groove Armada. I can't believe it. I almost didn't remember this. If you don't remember weekend players, look them up. They were fantastic. One of the Groove Armada members then um, actually came out. So the weekend players opened. Groove Armada, one of, I think it was the bass player, came out and played with them. And then Groove Armada did their thing and um, it was super cool. They're the ones who do uh, I Hear You, Baby, shaking that butt, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's crazy. The Ministry, Goldie Fotek, that was a great night. Uh, Fatboy Slim, that was a fantastic concert. Funny story about this one is I got tickets for my now uh, wife. We were, we were, I think we had, yeah, we were dating. Um, <laughs> just started dating <laughs> for like a couple months. And then. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to get tickets to go to Fat Boy Slim, and she's like, uh, "No, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm too tired." <laughs> so I'm trying to remember. Oh, I think I took my roommate. Uh, that was a fantastic concert. Uh, Saint Etienne, The Orb, just awesome. And then you know, there's concerts that I, you know, I almost should just burn these tickets because there's the Police that was in here. I've got Lollapalooza. This was oh, this Lollapalooza was just unbelievable I remember i'm like what is this duffy band or what's this mia i've never heard of them before or uh i think that one was rapture lcd sound system and then it closed this one actually this lollapalooza closed with daft punk who now just broke up this year what the heck so oh man it's just so much cool stuff u2 pop mart tour i probably should have had this one earlier that was 19 97 holy crap yeah this is kind of out of order so we got u2 pop mart tour that one was nuts um trying to remember it did i turn 21 then yeah so i turned 21 this night so during the concert i couldn't drink but afterwards i could or something stupid like that uh, i had to wait till midnight yeah i had to wait till midnight because it was june 25th so my birthday is june 26th so for anybody who cares um, and then I went to U2 again in the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Oh, I think this is must be because I did like a little U2 section here. Um, I've been to U2 too many times. A couple of them I haven't even 
kept the ticket because I'm just like, I'm done with it. Um, really funny. Sisters of Mercy, another classic. So, again, I talked about, you know, Sex Pistols and some of those. You know, again, I was a big fan. Um, there was also, like, some Lollapalooza. I saw Love and Rockets once. That was pretty cool. Um, Fleetwood Mac, I get suckered into. Now it starts to get soft, right? Um, Air Supply, Bon Jovi, Disney on Ice. What the heck is this doing in here? Mickey Minnie's Magical Journey. Oh, check this out. So I must have separated by sections a little bit. This is the oldest ticket I have, which in high school, we went to the state high school tournament. So I saved that ticket forever. That was 1991. That's insane. Then I did save one tennis ticket while $5 a piece. It was an afternoon session of the RCA Players Championship. That was This was so cool because when we went to that tournament, I think it was in Indy, so we, we drove down with my like tennis team up in, from Green Bay, went down, and you literally get to hang out with the players. And, um, God, I remember they were just so massive. Those guys are like football players. Um, they open up the, the practice courts where you could basically – just stand on the other side of the fence and just sit there and watch them. And, and then they, after they're done practicing, they come out and sign autographs. So I'm pretty sure in my memorabilia, I have like signed off autographs of like, like Edberg and Courier and Tim uh, Gullickson and all those guys. So um, in fact, I just watched uh, Kim King James or King Richard, sorry, King James. King Richards, the, uh, the um, HBO Max, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it really gets you thinking in the tennis world. It was pretty amazing. With with uh, It was very Venus uh, heavy, which is kind of weird with Serena being the best, like, best female athlete of all time. Um, let's see, Lord of the Dance. One thing that's interesting is I did at one point keep all of my movie tickets. So I've got Armageddon in here, uh, Spy Game. Training Day, Jeepers Creepers, Traffic. You get a kind of a theme. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, AI. Oh man, it's just ton. Oh, and I, Star Wars. Check this out. 1999, the movie Go, which is a big. I I like that one. Uh, Matrix is very appropriate. That was 99. Yes, uh, I think these Star Wars ones were kind of the reboot. I think. I don't know if it was Phantom Menace or not. It doesn't say on the ticket. Damn. But I know there were some like re-releases um, that when I was in college. Uh, I went to the Rose Bowl, which is really cool. So I went in 1999. That was the Ron Dane game where he just destroyed him. Interesting was that like Kate McDown <clears throat> was awesome. And then he gets drafted by the Bears and he sucked. <laughs> Rules of Engagement is another one. Wow, lots of cool stuff. Got some uh, NBA basketball games. Uh, one thing I, I really, really liked, you know, Lord of the Rings is a special movie series. Uh, my dad and I used to go to Lord of the Rings. It was every, it felt it wasn't it like every Christmas one was when it would come out. And it was really cool. He's a big hobbit. Uh, fan, so it was really special to go to the movies, and it was always over Christmas. So I have the the Two Towers, Lord of the Rings again, uh, Star Wars: Attack of the Clones, back in 2002, anger management. Also, so tonight's big debate was like, I saw, I remember seeing George Carlin, and I I always quote him like, "Come on, Todd." <laughs> stuff like that and then they're like you're crazy but i did actually see him before um i started dating my wife that's pretty interesting um wrong turn italian job matrix reloaded so i guess that would be the second one right so i had the other matrix here so that was 99 and it was four years later they came out with that new one that's interesting anger management what is this one? Oh, Second City. So a lucky being in Chicago, we have Second City Theater. Ravinia is another one um, that I've been to. Passion of the Christ. I can't believe that's a dear anchor man. Friday night. Skarsky and Hutch. Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. 
Chicago Wolves is a really good, uh, good fun one. Million Dollar Baby, Star Wars again. Um, the Chicago Fire, Blue Man Group. I've been to a couple. I've been in the Vegas, and then I've also been in the Chicago one. I think at least twice. Um, a couple. I got a bunch of black. You know, the circus with the kids. A lot of fun stuff. The Gospel Brunch, which is good to do. I'd recommend doing that one time. Um, I don't, I don't know if they still do it. I don't know if the House of Blues is even around anymore. Oh, the other thing my wife and I used to watch, So You Think You Can Dance Religiously, for probably the first five, six years. And so we went to <laughs> we went to that. It was like all like like all the girls and gymnasts and stuff like that, and dancers and stuff. That was pretty fun. Um, we went to Shout, been to Sky Games, more Circus, Chicago Blackhawks. Here's some of my uh, Bears tickets. I kind of threw them in here, and also Packer tickets are in here, some of them. I don't think I have a binder just for my Packers. Oh, here's a ton of Packer games in here. It's just great going through all these memories and stuff like that. Man, it's a real bummer that I don't really keep my tickets anymore. Uh, Six Flags, I don't know why I kept that. That's pretty nuts. And then, of course, more... Um, I don't know what I kept these for. Oh, this is this is probably something pretty cool. Check this out for those golf fans out there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is the um, the 39th Ryder Cup in 2012, uh, 18th hole, baby. That's where that's right. I had tickets on the 18th hole. That was pretty crazy. Um, and then I went to I went to it twice that year. I went to a practice round. Uh, with my father-in-law, and then I went to the 18th hole in the, uh, we had one of the cabanas uh, there, so that was pretty insane. Um, what else do I have in here? Just random stuff. So cool. Oh, so this is from, these are, tr these are uh, museum tickets from when we were in uh, Paris. <laughs> Just tons of stuff. Oh, this is my, the, the trip. So, I've been to Spain, I've been to Paris, been all over the place. Man, I have been one lucky person. I really do feel lucky. Been to a lot of cool stuff, uh, just more the sweets. I actually, at one point, because I um, did a lot of hospitality for clients and also our sellers, I've been in the United Center suite. I practically own, own that place for how much I've dropped uh, in tickets, so... Just tons of fun memories. I'm really glad that I have this. I'm glad I was able to share this in the digital universe. I probably rambled a lot more. I don't know if anybody even cared. But, man, it's really just a part of me and all of the, you know, there's things you can just buy, like the, the bricks, and there's experiences you can have. But I tell you, in life, I you know, it's it's been too bad. I think a lot of people have probably missed out. You know, virtual doesn't do it, right? I think... It'll be good, hopefully, in the next year or two that we can kind of get back, support great artistry out there, and, uh, you know, get some tickets if you can't, and save your tickets. Let me know in the comments, what do you do with your tickets? And it's kind of a bummer. We've kind of moved to all the digital crap. Maybe there's a way to, to save that. Maybe NFTs or whatever those are. <laughs> Maybe I should turn these into NFTs and be like, look at look at the cool stuff. This is an experience that I had. I don't know if anybody else cares, but there you go. That is episode number five, the Scott Ticket Collection. That's pretty vast. I've lived a, a pretty good like adult life. Uh, pre kids with tons and tons of experiences. I'm gonna hold this, hold on to this, and I think it would be fun to uh, showcase this, maybe to the grandkids. You never know. You never know. They'll be like tickets. What the hell are those? So with that, thanks for joining me on this experience, this journey of tickets on my episode five of the Journalist Scott's Book Club. That we'll see you in episode number six.